Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Fem Ten Tails. Part 1. Huge shout out to Dragon Soul 94 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Ahhh, damn you Minato. I am going to kill you after this is over. You hear me threatened a young red-haired woman as he arrived in agony. I understand Kishina-chan, replied a man with spiky blonde hair that had two strands that framed his handsome, yet frightened face. Hearing snickering from his left, the young man turned to see chuckling from an older man with long white hair and two other medic ninjas. It's a good thing you have your Horatian, because you would be screwed without it otherwise, he said in between his chuckling of the blonde's misfortune. These three people were Kishina Uzumaki, Minato Namikaze, and Jureya of the Sanin respectively. They were all here due to Kishina giving birth to a young girl that they all agreed to name Naruko Uzumaki Namikaze. Minato and Jureya were here for moral support for the soon-to-be mother. They were also here to contain things should they go wrong. Kishina Uzumaki was something known as a container or Jinchuriki, shinobi that had a creature of immense power called a tailed beast or biju sealed inside of their body. The young redhead was the container of the QB no Yoko, which was the strongest of the all of the biju, totaling in at 9. As a female container, holds a separate risk that the male containers do not, which is childbirth. During the process of giving birth, the seal that hold the biju inside the Jinchuriki weakens to the point that it barely stays together, which gives the biju a chance to break free. For this reason, Kishina was giving birth in a hidden location and being watched by two seal masters, while also having the wife of the Hokage, Uwako, and Tsunade Senju, who was a renowned medic ninja and won the legendary Sanin along with Ureya, give birth to her daughter. With one final push and yell, the cries of a baby soon filled the room. Minato and Kishina, who was panting heavily, looked at the baby held in Tsunade's arms, with love shining in their orbs. Tsunade, after cleaning the baby slightly, handed the child to Kishina, who held it gently with a small smile on her face. For a few moments, everyone was happy and enjoying the moment while coddling over the newborn, who had been placed in a crib not a moment later, so that Minato and Jureya can check Kishina's seal, and Tsunade can heal her. Boako had stayed by the crib to watch the baby. Everyone was so preoccupied, no one noticed a new figure enter the room behind two of the medic ninjas stationed. Cries of pain and a loud thud caught everyone's attention as they turned to see the cause. It was a person wearing an orange and black mask, while his entire body was hidden behind his cloak and hood. The mask held only one hole which revealed a red eye with three tomos encircling the pupil. Beneath the man was the dead bodies of the medic nin, and across from them was an unconscious buwako. Feeling the power of the man before them, out them all on high alert, or as alert as Kashina could get. Getting into a stance, Minato glared at the mask individual as Jureya and Tsunade looked for any signs of movement from the man foolish enough to challenge two San and an Akage without any signs of worry. Who are you? The blonde Kage demanded. My identity is of no concern to you fourth Hokage, the masked person, now revealed man by his voice, responded. All I want is for you to hand over the Jinchuriki, and there will be no issues. This information shocked Minato, since there shouldn't be many people aware of Kashina's status as a Jinchuriki. How do you know of that? That is also not of your concern, the masked man responded smoothly. Are you going to follow my request? This caused the three available shinobi and Kinoichi to glare harder for asking for such a thing like he was asking for a cup of sugar from a neighbor. The man sighed before staring back harder. Even with the life of your daughter at stake. What do you mean? Kishina yelled out in her exhausted state and still barely sat herself up, showing her immense willpower. The masked man was completely unaffected by the killing intent released by the redhead. If you would look closely at the bundle of joy in my arms. Suddenly holding a white blanket, but it was what's in the blanket that worried them. It was their baby, it was Naruko. Now I will only say this one more time, the masked man stated while pulling out a kunai and pointing it at the baby in his arms, this action causing Jureya and Tsunade to tense. Hand over the Jinchuriki or the child passes at the ripe age of eight Minchus. Now let's stay calm and not do anything hasty, Minato spoke trying to buy enough time to think of a plan. Yeah we can talk this out, Jureya said, seeing what his student was trying to do. Oh you don't have to worry about me, the masked man said. I am perfectly calm. He yelled out and tossed the kunai upwards and into the roof. Before anyone could speak, the kunai began to sizzle, signifying an exploding tag being ignited. The masked man then quickly threw Naruko out the nearby window, without a care for the baby's life. Acting quickly, Minato dove after his daughter. He caught her, but noticed her blanket was covered in exploding tags that had been activated. Snapping out of his shock and worry, Minato threw the blanket off, but still had to get away because of how close the blanket was to them, so he activated his Horatian and teleported away in a flash of yellow. 
Lenato reappeared in his daughter's room, which was still bare at the moment other than a baby's crib and some toys. Minato slowly laid his daughter down into her crib and kissed her forehead as she slept, surprised that she was sleeping through all that. He quickly appeared back into the chamber only to find a hurt Tsunade, healing a more injured Jiraiya. Seeing his worried student, Jiraiya spoke up. It was all a trick. As soon as the tags went off, he used the smoke from the explosion and the falling debris as a cover. He somehow appeared beside me and Tsunade and knocked us both out the way and was by Kashina. Before I could get up, an explosion went off next to me, damaging me even more. I'm sorry Minato he got away with Kashina. The toad sand and looked down in shame that some unknown man had gotten away with his student's wife while under his watch. We will find him, he is not getting away. Minato growled in anger. But what does he want with the QB? Suddenly a loud roar could be heard far outside the building they were in, a roar so powerful that it made their heart stop in fear. Looking outside, their skin became pale in fear. The nine-tailed fox was free and was attacking Kanoha. It rampaged, destroying buildings with its mighty roar. Explosions were taking place, showing that the Kanoha shinobi were doing their best to attack the QB who was destroying their home. Tsunade, I need you to find Kashina and get her to safety. He most likely took her somewhere near that location due to QB attacking. Jiraiya sensei, get here as Insama while I go and take care of the QB. They nodded as they vanished to complete their individual jobs. The QB just pushed through several fire base jutsus and glared angrily. It roared angrily, pushing the shinobi jumping around back and destroying the building in front of before charging up negative and positive chakra in its mouth to form its most powerful attack. The most powerful and feared attack of all the nine biju, the tailed beast bomb. The wind and pressure quickly picked up, paralyzing everyone around in fear of the technique. With another mighty roar that shook the very earth itself, it fired the Bijuadama, and everyone watched in morbid helplessness as the ball of destruction raced towards the Hokage monument, intent on obliterating it from existence. The bright flash of light shone on the monument as the fourth Hokage appeared in front of the oncoming attack. Giving the attack a hardened gaze, Minato whipped out one of tri-pronged kunai and held in front of him as a ceiling array appeared and made a crack in the air. The hole absorbed the attack slowly, barely able to contain itself. In the blink of an eye, the hole and Bijudama were gone as an explosion miles from Kanoha rocked the burning village. The Bijudama had been teleported safely away from the village, thanks to the seal Minato used. Before the fourth Hokage had time to breathe in relief, he sensed immediate danger behind him and ducked in time as a hand reached out to grab him. He swung his kunai to stab the man, only for it to go through him as if he wasn't even there. The masked man tried to grab Minato once more, only for him to use his Horatian to teleport away from his reach. The man followed and pursued as he swirled into a vortex before he was gone. They both appeared in the woods of Kanoha, not too far as the battle against the QB raged on. Why would you do this? Minato demanded. What would you gain from this senseless attack? For my own ambitions and reasons, the man replied before charging forward. Minato followed suit. The two powerful shinobi clashed with kunais, sparks flying everywhere from the metal scraping metal. The man sent a chain downward as it wrapped around Minato's left leg. Acting quickly, Minato threw his kunai backwards and teleported away. He grabbed the kunai from the air as he appeared again. The masked man merely stood up straight as he stared at Minato. A red eye with three tomos spinning. And Ichiha Minato yelled out mentally. That explains how he's controlling the QB, but the only known Ichiha with a Sharingan strong enough to do that is Madara Ichiha. He spared a quick glance at the Biju, in any case, I have to end this fight. The amount of destruction it's causing is immense. First I have to break his hold on the QB looking back to his opponent, Minato charged forward with his kunai in hand. The masked man followed suit, ready to kill the fourth Hokage at last and destroy Kanoha. He thrust the chain forward, but Minato jumped up, dodging it and thrust his kunai downwards, only for it to phase through him. The man took advantage of his opponent's shock and thrust a kunai of his own through Minato's head only, for it to poof into a log. So he used the substitution jutsu the masked man used as he looked to his left and saw Minato unharmed. So my eyes weren't playing tricks on me, I really phased through him Minato thought. But he still materializes if he wants to harm me, I need to get him when he is moments from striking me. This will be a battle of speed and timing. All decided in a single moment. The ensuring technique clash ended in a blink of an eye. The two charged each other, and Minato launched his kunai only for it to phase through its target just like he planned. When the masked man was about to grab Minato, he here I shined above the man and struck him in the back with a powerful Rasengan, his second signature technique. This attack caused a crater to form in the ground. The masked man suddenly appeared on a nearby tree branch as his left arm was gone and white goo oozed on the floor. Before he could think, Minato appeared in front of him. 
Not expecting this of the Minato, he didn't have time to react before Minato put his hands on his chest as a seal array appeared. The contract seal. The masked man exclaimed in shock. You now no longer have any control over the Nine Tails, Minato spoke. The masked man jumped away. You truly earned your title, the masked man spoke as he began to leave through the vortex. I will return for the Nine Tails. I will change this world, and there are many ways for me to do so. He slowly vanished from sight. I really don't think he was joking about that, Minato spoke. Feeling a familiar chakra, Minato turned around and was surprised by the sight and saddened. The Nine Tails was wrapped in golden chains made of charka, the signature technique of his wife. What saddened him was that the Nine Tails was being sealed again by use of the jutsu known as the Shaiki Fuin or the Reaper Death Seal. Only two others besides himself knew how to perform that jutsu, and only one would be capable right now. The third Hokage, here is in Siratobi. Minato quickly here I shined to the ending fight, and what he saw was confirmed. His wife's chakra chains were fading as she was being taken care of by Tsunade, just barely alive, thanks to her Uzumaki genes and quick medical attention. He saw Jureya pick up his daughter from the ceiling altar, while the Anbu mourned the loss of the now dead third Hokage. Thank you Lord Third Minato said in prayer and respect. I swear your sacrifice will not be in vain. With sadness and determination in his heart, he walked forward to join everyone in taking care of his family and the village. Six years later. The area around was pure black, no light seemed to dare to try and illuminate what the darkness now occupied. Except for one area. Different colors of chakra swirled around each other, blue, red, black, and mostly white. Each chakra began to spin even faster around each other, creating a dome of swirling energy. The chakras began to slowly merge and spread, creating a small body. When the energy made a shape they were satisfied with, it began to recede, revealing what was underneath. First, the hands and legs, then they converged into the torso and neck. The light began to recede upwards, revealing the face and continued to fade. The last thing revealed was the hair. What was in place of the powerful energy was a young boy, who was around the age of six. He had pale skin, like one who doesn't get enough sunlight, his hands were small with claw-like fangs protruding from his upper lip. He was shirtless, showing he had impressive muscle tone for his age. He also possessed shoulder-length silver hair that was slightly spiked, which also had bangs framing his petite face. For a moment, nothing happened. Until he snapped his eyes open, revealing deep blue eyes with black slit pupils. The moment his eyes opened, his chakra burst out like a powerful storm, only to be stopped by a barrier. The storm of chakra continued to push against the powerful barrier, causing sparks to fly throughout the dark room. With another powerful flux of power, the boy's chakra pushed against the barrier with more force. It looked like the barrier would still hold until it began cracking. The crack was small, easily ignored until it spread quickly. In a few seconds, the barrier encasing the boy was filled with cracks, and a seal array appeared above the boy. The child stood up and jumped upwards with a lot of force and power. The child made contact with the cracked barrier, and it could no longer hold back its tenant and shattered. The boy reached out and touched something solid as a white glowing seal appeared and absorbed the boy. The seal appeared on the sun-bathed ground and glowed white before Chakra swirled around, and the young emerged. He looked around as he covered his eyes due to not being used to the sunlight. His eyes soon adjusted as he took in his surroundings. The trees in this area were destroyed and the ground scorched. The very earth itself was upturned. As he looked behind him, his eyes turned a blood red, and his mind was assaulted with information. Madara, Minato, Kanoha, Chakra, and finally Naruko and Jutsus. The young man, not knowing his name, decided to adapt using that girl's name. Before he could think of anything else, five figures appeared in the destroyed clearing. Five, adults going by size, appeared. They all wore black cloaks and animal masks over their faces. The masks were relatively blank besides for the letters northeast on the foreheads of the masks. The young man tilted his head to the left as he recognized these guys from the information earlier. They were something called Anbu, elite warriors among shinobi. Skilled fighters of assassination that killed from the shadows. Come with us boy, the Anbu in the bear mask commanded. Our lord will want to see you. Their master most likely have felt that incredible chakra that was just released. They felt it themselves when on their way back from a mission they were sent on by their master, Danzo. No thank you, the boy responded before jumping backwards, dodging a blade of pure wind. The Anbu at his left tried to blindside him with his jutsu. I don't like the feeling I'm getting from you all. He finished talking like he wasn't just attacked. It wasn't a request, the bear masked one relied. He started his hand signs, it was a demand, fire style. Flame spark. He shot a small stream of fire towards the boy, using a low-level fire jutsu to hurt and not kill the boy, who merely stared at the fire for a second before slamming his palm on the ground. Earth style. 
Earth wall, the boy spoke and a wall of rock and stone rose up in front of him, completely blocking the fire jutsu. He did that with no hand signs the Anbu bear spoke in slight surprise. Get him, don't let him ug. He tried to command before a spike of rock rose from the ground behind him and stabbed him through the back. I didn't even sense that. He finished before he slumped forward, going limp, dead. The remaining four Anbu looked to their dead commander before returning their sights onto the boy, who had his arms stretched to his sides as he gathered chakra. I told you I had no interest to see your master, he spoke coldly. And for you ignoring my warning two orbs of chakra formed on his open palms. Negative and positive chakra gathered and went black as the orb of dense chakra finished. You will die. Twin-tailed beast bomb. The two condensed balls made contact with the surprised Anbu, exploding on contact while creating a small black dome. Trees were either destroyed or uprooted due to the force. The ground was even more scarred than before, with two deep craters and freshly scorched soil. Lowering his arms, the boy looked to the remains of one of the dead Anbu, specifically the one who asked for his identity. By the way, my name is Naruto, Naruto Atsusuki. The now named Naruto looked to the left as his red eyes turned to their true blue color. Looks like I'm going over there. I don't know why, but I feel a strong pull. Oh well, at least it will give me time to over everything bouncing in my head. A new goal in mind, Naruto made his trek towards the destination of the strong pull, Kanahagakur. Naruto had been walking for about two hours after killing the Anbu that attacked him earlier. From what he figured out, the energy they were all using and that he himself subconsciously used was called Chakra. Chakra was the combination of both physical and spiritual energy. In a sense, Chakra was a basic layer for many forms of power. Every living thing around him possessed it, but he had no idea it even existed. So how did he know to manipulate it or even know how to attack with those moves he used on those men? He couldn't even remember his own name or who he really was since his name was made up. Why was he locked away in that dark place? He had so many questions, so he figured he would start at Kanahagakur. He didn't know how he knew of the Leaf Village, as it seemed to be called sometimes, just that all the info he had seemed to be based around that village and knowledge of different ways to use chakra. This knowledge of how to utilize chakra is what led him to a new thought. Channeling chakra to his legs, he leapt up on a nearby tree branch which he almost fell off. Taking a deep breath, Naruto jumped from one branch to another at a quick pace. He started gaining speed as he slowly began to get used to it. Yeah, this will save me plenty of time he thought as he continued to jump. As he jumped, Naruto went through the information that he got from who nowhere. He learned of an interesting term called Kekai Jenkai. This was used to explain people or a family of chakra users that have a mutation in their DNA that allows them to use an ability easier than others or something that only that family can do. He knows that they seem to branch off into categories. Dogitus or eye-based Kekai Jenkai, body-based which affect how the body can change or move, and chakra-based which usually involve using a sub-element with ease or even increased chakra storages. Thinking about it, he seemed to be able to see the chakra of those Anbu, much like a Byakugan user seems to be able to do. He wondered if his body held any of these Kekai Jenkais, which maybe helped him be able to use chakra easier. He also saw many different styles and jutsus that made him curious about them, and even made the mental note to try them, as they all seemed to call out to him. It all felt so familiar and comfortable to him. I don't get it Naruto thought to himself as he jumped off another branch. All this knowledge of chakra and how to use it, and yet I don't have a single clue of who I am. I don't know if I have these parents or even a home to go to. I also seem to have the memories of another. Just who is this Naruko girl? Why do I keep thinking of her? No point in racking my mind over this I guess. I'll just have to find the answer when I get there. Naruto then added more chakra and picked up the pace, hoping to find the answers he was searching for. After another 45 minutes, Naruto finally arrived at his attention. The village hidden in the leaves. Naruto was honestly a bit impressed by the village's incredible structure. Those walls did not look easy to bypass. But landed on the last tree branch before the clearing, he saw two people in a booth in front of the gates. They must be the guards of the gates. So, do I get in thought? Do I just ask for entry? Naruto thought to himself. After what happened with the Anbu earlier, Naruto was a bit defensive. He was not too comfortable to just walk up to the guards in case they worked for this macer that they mentioned earlier. Maybe I can trick them, but how can I? Naruto's train of thought left him as an idea began forming in his mind from another set of memories. The young Atsusuki instinctively gathered his chakra to his eyes as he prepared to enact his idea, unaware of his eyes slightly fluctuating in color before setting back to its normal blue. In front of the gates were two Chunin, Izumo and Kitetsu. They were bored out of their minds, annoyed that they worked hard to become Chunin, and instead of going out on missions, were stuck guarding Kanoha's near impenetrable gates. Hey, Izumo, Kitetsu spoke to his best friend, who gave him a hum in response. How much longer until our shift ends? 
I get so bored here. Azumo shook his head at his old friend's annoyed tone. Just two more hours so suck it up the words he was speaking dies out as he sensed a presence in front of him. Looking up, he and Kitetsu locked eyes with a young boy with eyes as blue as their hokages, only with slit pupils. Kitetsu was about to ask who the child was but he suddenly felt drowsy. Looking to his left, he caught Izumo was barely keeping his eyes open. Grabbing the side of his head to try to keep the sleep away, Kitetsu looked at the silver-haired child, who looked at them in concern. Finally, Kitetsu lost the battle of staying awake as he fell backwards and let the realm of sleep take him over, the slight pulse of chakra here released in another attempt to stay awake. Kitetsu awoke with a start as he jumped to his feet and began looking around. Hearing a loud thud came from behind him, he turned around to find his chair had fallen over. Gazing around once more, he found nothing wrong as his partner Izumo was still asleep, his head still on the check-in desk. Was that just a dream? He thought to himself. He looked around for the young boy, only to find no sign he had ever even been there. Deciding to wake up his partner, he turned to him. Before he could proceed to shake him, a loud commotion got his attention. Looking up, his eyes widened at the sight before him. It was a crowd of women, at least 25, and they were all gorgeous. They all held signs with his face and name as they released cried of devotion and love for him. But the most shocking of it all. They wore skimpy clothing that barely covered anything. The Tetsu had blood running out his nose at the sight, as he grinned perversely. Izumo can wait he thought to himself. Well hello ladies. Naruto stood in front of the two passed out chunins, tilting his head to the side as he saw blood leak from their noses while giggling perversely. Bain Jutsu? Paradise Swarm, what a strange technique I came up with Naruto thought to himself as he entered the village. He was shocked at the bustling village, civilians walking around or shinobi jumping on the rooftops similar to what he was doing in the forest earlier. So much was going on around him, Naruto felt like his head was spinning. That's when Naruto felt it, the same pull that led him to the village in the first place. Looking to his right, where the strong pulling was coming from, his eyes turned red as he was assaulted with images of a tall red building with windows and many shinobi around it. I guess I'll try over there Naruto thought as he ran towards the pole. Naruto ran past many different people, some even smiled in his direction. This confused Naruto, why smile when he didn't even know them? He didn't get it, but he just returned the smile. After a few more minutes of running, Naruto arrived at his destination. From the memory I saw, this is called the Hokage Tower, he mused to himself. Looking around, he saw a lot of shinobi going about their business, either hanging around, getting missions, or talking to their teams. Deciding to not gain any suspicion on himself, he walked into the building. Naruto reached a desk that had another woman sitting at it, outside of the door he needed to get to. He walked up to the lady, Hitsumi from the tag on the desk, and got her attention. Hello young one, Hitsumi greeted him with a warm smile. May I help you with something? Where are your parents? Naruto tilted his head slightly, making the woman find him adorable, as he smiled back. Hello, he greeted in return. I wish to enter that room behind you. I don't have any parents to answer your second question. The woman was not only surprised at well the young man spoke for his age, but the fact that he had no parents. Hitsumi's heart went out to the young boy. Well, I'm sorry young one, but I can't just let you in without a reason, she replied apologetically. This isn't a place where you can just play at, it's where the leader of our village works at. Naruto racked his brain on how to gain access to the room, and a thought mixed with a memory. I would like to join the academy and become a shinobi of the village. I hear that someone without a parent comes here to enroll. Hitsumi nodded her head, his words not being wrong. Orphan children generally do come here and speak to the Hokage personally to enroll as a shinobi of Konoha. Even then though, they usually go to the academy first and get brought here by one of the instructors who look them over, before bringing them here to get enrolled by the Hokage. Plus, the academy has already started so this young man will be playing catch up. Unfortunately, it wasn't up to her if he got accepted or not. Okay young man, Hitsumi answered finally as she stood up. Let me alert Hokage-sama about you, and I will call you an okay. Naruto nodded and thanked her as she disappeared behind the door. After a few seconds she called Naruto in as she went back to her desk to go through the paperwork. Naruto reached for the door, where the pull from earlier was so strong that it gave him a slight headache. Opening the door, Naruto was greeted by the sight of six other individuals. He noticed that three of the individuals were almost always reoccurring through his mind. The blonde man behind the desk is Minato Namikaze, the older redhead is Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaze, and the younger redhead is Naruko Yuzumaki Namikaze. Naruko was young, around the age of six or seven. She had slightly long, red hair that was tied into pigtails. She had beautiful blue eyes that would make the seas jealous and the skies cry. Her skin was a healthy tan, and she was about average height for kids her age, maybe an inch taller. She wore a dark orange shirt with a red swirl on the front. She also had gray slacks and green sandals. 
The other occupants, Naruto was able to recognize as he looked at their eyes. He knew for a fact that they were Hyuga, but that's about the extent to his knowledge. The first person was an older gentleman, maybe his late thirties, with long black hair and a calculating gaze. He wore a long-sleeved brown Hayori that covered up to his feet which were in grey shinobi sandals. Next to him was another man with a headband tied to his forehead that he saw all shinobi wear. He had the same pupilless wide eyes as the other man and the same stoic expression. He also wore a green vest with a lot of pockets on the front, along with dark blue pants. He also had a pouch located on his left hip. The third and final person was a young girl who was the same age as him and Naruko. She had indigo blue hair, unlike the two men beside her. She had lavender wide eyes that were pupilless, much like the men, meaning she was also a Hyuga. She wore a tan Hayori which a little too big on her small frame. She hid behind the legs of the older men when Naruto entered the room, trying to disappear from view. Hello young man, may I help you? Minato asked the silver-haired boy politely, though he already knew what it was he wanted. He honestly wasn't expecting anyone else to come in today, hence he was with his family and best friend from his genin days. Naruto gazed at Minato, as if trying to process the question he asked, or if he was a threat to himself. Why was he again? What was the real reason that he came here, because he could care less about joining a village? Moving his gaze from the older blonde to the small redeed, his eyes gained a slight more focused look. When they locked eyes, Naruto felt it again. The powerful pulse that kept calling out to him was coming from the young girl, the same girl whose memories he kept seeing. Deciding to answer the man, whose gaze seemed to harden slightly when Naruto stared too long at the young girl, he bowed. Greetings Hokage Minato, my name is Naruto Atsusuki. His action surprised the adults in the room for one, this was one of the most polite children they have met outside the Hyuga Uchiha clans. Judging by his shirtless torso and slightly dirty clothing, he wasn't well financed either. At the same time, he was rude to call Minato by his given name, due to him being the Hokage, and should only be addressing as such. Naruto noticed the surprised look he was getting and was confused by the reason. Tilting his head to the left he continued. As for my being here, it's like I told the lady outside the door, I would like to join the academy and the village. I also would like to figure out why I am being pulled towards that girl, towards Naruko he added mentally. Shaking out of his stupor, Minato looked at Naruto with a careful gaze. I don't see why not Minato began, only to be interrupted by his wife, due to her motherly instincts, finally being too difficult to ignore after seeing the condition and what he was wearing. Where are your parents? Shouldn't they be here with you? Kashina asked rather bluntly. Tilting his head to the other side, causing the girls to bite back Akawe at how cute he looked, Naruto gazed at her. My parents. The one to respond was Naruko, who was staring at Naruto since he walked in. Yeah. Like your mommy and daddy. Naruto shook his head in response. I don't have any as far as I can remember, which I will admit is sadly not that much. I woke up alone in a forest and stayed in a nearby town for a while before making my way here. This news shocked everyone, especially the adults at the implications of Naruto's words. This boy, no older than both of their daughters, traveled to Konoha all on his own. They could see that he wasn't lying to them. Undeterred by their shock, Naruto continued. So, may I join the village? Minato paused for a moment to think it over, though he had his answer as he wasn't so keen on throwing a child back into the wild. Yes Naruto-san Minato began to answer before he was interrupted by said child. Naruto. The young silver-haired boy said. Please just call me Naruto. Minato smiled at the boy, not really by bothered by the rude interruption, unlike his friend Hiyashi, who looked annoyed by the boy. As you wish Naruto. I see no reason why you can't join my village. Thank you Minato-san, Naruto replied with his own small smile. Does that mean I can also join as a ninja of the village? Minato gave Naruto a more apologetic smile as he shook his head. That request is going to be a bit more difficult to give you I'm afraid, he said in a soft tone. The academy has already been started for about a month now. To be in the academy, you would need to unlock your chakra, which is done and taught in the first week. So I'm afraid that Minato trailed off slowly as he lost the words he was going to say when he caught sight of the event before him. The boy's silver hair was spiked upward, as if defying the planetary force called gravity. His body looked as if it was glowing blue while the wind around him picked up. The dust also spun at a quickened pace, even some of the wood creaked in defiance of the force that was determined to break it. His hair, along with everyone else's in the room, flapped about due to the strong winds that filled the room. His daughter and the young Yuga girl covered their faces in an attempt to block out the stinging winds on their faces. How does this boy have so much chakra? Minato mentally yelled out in awe. The only person he knows with this much chakra at this young of an age was his very own daughter, and she had the advantage of not only being an Uzumaki, but also being a Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, while also being the daughter of a previous Jinchuriki of the same tailed beast. 
thanks to his sensei's spy network, he knows the identity of each Jinchuriki, and this boy was definitely not one of them. The three Yu gas were happy at the fact they did not activate their Byakugan, as they would have gone blind with the amount of chakra that Naruto was releasing. Pishina and Naruko were surprised that someone other than themselves had so much chakra. Naruto, who finally stopped pushing his chakra, took a relaxing breathe and took note of the shocked expressions of the room's other occupants. Before Naruto could say anything, four Anbu members appeared around him with their weapons drawn. This caused Naruto to tense up as he got ready to defend himself. Stand down, Minato commanded he regained his composure. The Anbu looked to their Hokage in slight protest, but nodded at his order nonetheless and vanished into their hiding places once more. Minato turned his gaze to Naruto and gave him a soft smile. I must say that I am impressed by the amount of chakra that you possess Naruto. Are you sure that you wish to join the academy now and not later? There will be much that you will have to catch up on. Naruto nodded with determination, though still on guard in case he needs to defend himself. Yes, I am sure sir, Naruto responded. I will manage just fine. Plus, this way I will be able to find out why I am being pulled towards that Naruko girl. Alright then, Minato said as he grabbed some papers from under his desk and grabbing a pen. Just give me a moment to sign these for you. Naruto nodded his head at the man. After all this I still do not know your names, Naruto spoke to the other room's occupants, primarily the Hugh Gas. Realizing that he was correct, the Hugh Gas gave him a slight bow. Our apologies for the rudeness. I am Hiashi Huga, the clan head of the Huga clan. This is Tahashi Huga, a member of the branch family. The young girl is my oldest daughter Hinata Huga, the heiress of the Huga clan. Naruto nodded and then smiled at the Huga members. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Hiashi san, Tahashi san, Hinata san. The moment Naruto said her name, Hinata's face went as red as a tomato. Naruto saw this and wondered what was wrong with the young Huga, but decided to simply shrug it off. Sensing someone closing in on him, Naruto was surprised to find Naruko directly in front of him. Hi there. Naruko greeted, not the least bit bothered by their close proximity to each other. What you did was so cool. I mean, I did once before too when I had to unlock my chakra before, but I thought me and mom were the only ones. Oh, my name is Naruko Yuzumaki Namikaze. If you looked closely, you could see that her body was practically vibrating in excitement. At a young age, Naruko learned that she enjoyed a challenge. It's why she enjoyed the little spars she has had with her family as she yet to beat them. The power that Naruto has shown made her instinct scream in joy at the prospect of a strong opponent. Naruto stared into her eyes, sensing the pull from her at his full force. Feeling the pull leading lower, he gazed that toward her gut where the pull was coming from. The sensation is coming from her stomach Naruto said to himself mentally. Realizing that she was waiting for a response, he spoke up. It's nice to meet you Naruko-chan. Maybe you and I can have a spar someday if that is true. Naruko's smile widened at his words, having to fight back the urge to hug the silver-haired boy in front of her with joy. She couldn't wait for that chance to have the spar. The only one that challenged her was her friend Sasuke. Alright Naruto, Minato spoke out as he handed Naruto the papers. These papers will let Aruka know that you are attending the academy as a new student and that I said you can join. Also, knowing that you don't have a home, those will give you a place to stay at, those will help give you a place to stay at that isn't far from here. It's not the most amazing place, but it's still cozy. Minato then handed him an envelope. This is the expense for the apartment until you start doing missions. If things go well, you won't have to worry about paying it off, should you drop out or fail, then that is another story altogether. Am I understood? Minato finished off his explanation by crossing his arms. Naruto nodded his head in understanding of the conditions. I understand Hokage-san, he said as he gave a grateful bow before turning and making his way towards the exit. Just as he was about to walk out, he heard a feminine voice call out to him. Do you even know how to get there? Turning around he noticed that the one who spoke out was the older redhead, Kishina Yuzumaki from the memories he had revealed. Finally registering the question, he shook his head since he had no clue where to go. Well I was about to head out and take Naruko and Hinata home, and the place Minato gave you is on the way, so why don't you walk with us? Thinking it over for a moment, Naruto nodded his head as he accepted her offer. Thank you, I would be very grateful for your help. Ashina smiled at his politeness, even if she felt weird due to not being used to this, before giving the Yan Daimei a kiss on the cheek and ushering the three children through the door. The four traveled for a good ten minutes talking, mostly the three children, before they arrived at Naruto's new apartment. His eyes narrowed slightly as he beepized the small numbers throughout the building, before finding his. He was apparently near the top floor, only about two floors away, room 55. After saying his goodbyes and assuring Kishina he could find his home from there, Naruto entered his new apartment room. He slowly gazed around the small one-bedroom apartment. 
Like the Hokage said, it was nothing too amazing. A small living room that had a single window which gave a pretty nice view of the village. The curtains were riddled with the Kanoha symbol. The small living room was directly connected to a small kitchen that had a stove, microwave, and refrigerator. Down the hall was two doors, one led to a nice little bedroom with a closet, another window, a decent-sized bed, and a dresser. The other door led to a bathroom with a decent-sized bathtub. All in all, it was perfect for a single person living here. So, this is our new home for now young lord, a voice echoed. Naruto jumped up, before he looked around for the voice with sharpened eyes. Relax young lord, I'm not here to hurt you. Besides, you would never find me by looking for Met that way. Who are you? Naruto questioned as he relaxed slightly. He felt that the voice was no threat to him, but he was still going to be careful. What do you want from me? Where are you? Well young lord, I'm a friend that's here to help you in a sense. You don't have your memories, but memories of others and I am here to help you on your path of strength and power. What I want from you? Well, it's for you to become the most powerful being in existence like you should be. As for where I am, why don't I just bring you to me? Before Naruto could ask what he meant, Naruto's vision became fuzzy and dark. When his vision began to return a few seconds later, Naruto noticed that he was no longer in his apartment. He was in a damp tunnel, but was surrounded by a forest of trees. The trees were pure white in color, while the floor was flooded with water that reached his ankles. Around the trees were a black mist that was just light enough to see ahead. The sky was a crimson color with pitch black clouds. There was a pure white moon in the sky. Where am I? Naruto asked to no one in particular. You are in your own mindscape young lord, the same voice earlier spoke out from behind Naruto. Naruto turned around and stared at the being before him. It was a small wolf pup, just barely being as big as his shoulders. The wolf pup had pitch black fur on the left half of its body, and a pure snow white on the right other half. The pup's pupils were slits much like his were, but the pups were different colors like his fur. The right pupil was black with a white iris, and the left pupil was white with a black iris. The sclera of both of its eyes were crimson in color, reminding Naruto of a pools of blood. The wolf pup possessed a single long tail that looked both fluffy yet powerful. While its legs were small, Naruto could see the muscle in them. The fangs were small but razor sharp, being able to easily tear through the flesh of its targets. Hello, young lord, the pup greeted with a fierce smirk and a small bow. It's good to see you face to face after all this time. Yes, I'm same here, Naruto replied in confusion. Usually the word lord is given to a ruler or someone of importance, so why was this wolf pup using it to refer to him? And what did he mean by mindscape? I can see that you are confused young lord, the wolf pup said as he sat down. Well to start off, I am a power construct. I am sort of a manifestation of your power. The stronger you become, the stronger I become. As for a name, you may call me Jubi. Then Tails. You only have one though, so wouldn't that make you more of an Ichibi? Naruto asked before taking a step back after hearing the pup growled in rage. You're wrong. Jubi yelled in anger before finally taking a calming breath. Sorry for losing my cool young lord. We are a very powerful being, even in our weakened state. The only reason we have a single tail is because we are growing in strength once more. We are not a one tails. What happened to us then? Naruto asked. Why are we weakened in the first place? Jubi scoffed as he smiled confidently. It's quite simple, what happened was. He paused as he thought it over. His face scrunched up in confusion as he thought hard, tilting his head to the side in confusion. I don't remember myself actually. I know we were in a seal, but I can't recall how we got there in the first place. Naruto sighed in annoyance at the pup. Then why do I feel so natural when I use my chakra, with no problems at all? Where are all these memories coming from? Like I said, I do not remember, Jubi replied as he looked down with slight annoyance. Then he perked up happily as his tail shot up. Though I know someone that might. Follow me young lord. He quickly ran off, only looking back every so often to see if Naruto was following him. Naruto followed the young pulp quietly, curious by who it was that Yubi was talking about. As they walked, Naruto noticed that the water on the floor rose higher as they walked further. The water itself changed from clear to a pure mixture of colors. For him, Naruto felt so amazing and warm, like being wrapped in a comforter on a cold day. He felt euphoric thanks to the feeling that rushed throughout him. The trees that surrounded them grew larger and looked much stronger than before. Many of the trees even had fruit hanging from their strong branches. What caught his attention was a soul tree that was larger than all of the others in a small clearing. This tree had numerous powerful branches that dripped different colors of liquid. At the top of the tree was a closed bud like one would find on a flower before it blooms. The tree itself was pale in color, much like the moon above. Naruto felt a powerful connection as he stared at the tree. This tree represents you and you're just as much as I do, Jubi said as he stood in front of the tree. This tree is named Shinju and represents both your will and strength. 
It also holds most of your knowledge and experience that are more spiritual in nature. The water that drips off it and that floods the floor is your chakra, and as you can see, it is a lot even in our weakened state. Naruto was shocked as he looked at the water which was just barely above his ankles. He called upon his chakra and watched the water begin to bubble and move like a river. The pale tree, the Shinju, began to glow slightly as its branches flowed to an invisible breeze. He also noticed that the hairs on the wolf pup pricked up as he seemed to gain a faint ring in his eyes. As you can see, Jubi continued. When you channel your chakra, it pulls from me and Shinju as well. Shinju glows brighter when you pull on pure chakra or elemental chakra as far as I know. When you pull on your yin or yang chakra, then I glow brighter as you will be pulling from me. Me and Shinju are two sides of the same coin. So, why don't we ask Shinju why we were locked up? Um Jubi, Naruto hummed as he gave the wolf pup a confused stare. I hate to break it to you, but that is just a tree. It can't exactly talk back to us. That is where you are wrong, Jubi replied as he chuckled. The Shinju is a living being just as much as you and I. In fact, its power may be stronger and more dense than my own, at least for now. Only you and me can talk to Shinju here since it is us. Connect with it, and Shinju will answer back. Give it a try, young lord. Before Naruto could ask him how was he supposed to connect to a tree, he felt a strong pull. The water swirled around his legs as he felt a warmth come across his body and mind which cleared all confusion. Hello my young lord, a female voice spoke to him. It's an honor to have you visit me so early, even if it's only for information. The voice was powerful as it echoed to him, yet it was also gentle and caring. The feminine voice also felt subdued, like there was danger hidden behind the kindness. Is that you, Shinju? He asked as he gazed at the massive tree as it glowed a gentle white, giving it a very divine appearance. Yes young lord, the voice responded, confirming it was the Shinju. When my power connects to your construct or even your chakra in general, I am able to establish a link that we can communicate through. Instruct form? Naruto questioned as he looked over his small body curiously. What is that? He honestly didn't feel any different, so he assumed he was either dreaming or in a different dimension or even a summon realm. Something that he picked up from his memories, or should he say the memory that keeps flashing with information. You see young lord, you are not actually here, Shinju responded softly. You are merely a construct of your chakra projected into your mindscape. A piece of your chakra and spirit that is projected into a space that represents your mind. Here is where me and Jubi here reside, so we may assist you in reaching your full power and potential, which could go badly if guided incorrectly. Then who or what am I exactly Shinju? Naruto asked seriously. I look like I am human, but I don't feel like that is correct. I feel nothing like how any of the humans felt. The closest to how I feel were Naruko and her mom, yet even they felt different compared to me. And what is it about that Naruko girl that makes me feel so drawn to her? Well the first question has an answer that I have none for unfortunately, young lord, Shinju answered. We may be self-aware to the point that we may act as separate beings, we are still only constructs of you. We generally only know as much as you do young lord. The only reason we know a bit more is because we have had time to sort through those memory flashes than you and learn a bit more. The reason for the ceiling and for our predicament will remain unknown until you yourself learn of it. And about the Naruko girl? Naruto questioned. I am unsure of the full details, Shinju replied. Just like Jubi implied earlier, his power will grow in proportionate to you, and thus his tail count will grow with each increase in significant power. From what I gathered, that girl has a power within her that is similar to Jubi's, and it's due to this similar power that you are being pulled towards her. From what I was able to gather from the memories, she is something called a Jinchuriki with a creature called a Biju within her. I am unsure what a Biju is fully, as I still have trouble looking through everything as the memories are kind of difficult to put together and clear up. So, I am something called a Jinchuriki, Naruto said softly as he tried to go over all the new information he has learned. Since I am one and I hold both of you, do you know what kind of creature she has within her? According to the memories, it's the in the shape of a fox with nine tails altogether, Shinju replied. Its complete appearance is foggy young lord. Maybe she will know more about this whole thing, Naruto thought out loud. I should ask her. That would be wise young lord, Shinju countered, getting the Atsusuki child's attention again. From the memories, the girl is an unknown Jinchuriki. The only ones knowing of the title being a select few. Apparently, her parents wanted it to remain a secret, the reason is something I have yet to uncover. Either way, with you being an outsider that know of a title that was kept secret from the villagers of their home, it would not look good on you. So what should I do then Shinju, Jubi? Naruto sighed in annoyance as he rubbed the back of his head in frustration. Each time he steps forward in a good direction, he keeps being blown back further than he walked. For now young lord, Jubi replied this time. I would say that you should just live your life and become stronger. After all, we need to be the strongest there is and there ever will be. 
The young wolf pup crouched in an aggressive stance as he growled and raised his power, causing the water around them to shake violently. Power and strength make life easier, and the world respects those two qualities. The seriousness in his tone made Naruto question and believe that Yubi was right. Kindness and a strong mind can give you a better, if not the same results as that, Shinju replied. Your method will only give us more enemies than needed. I do agree that we should use this time to gain more strength, but it should also be used to gain more allies. A kind heart and a powerful body can truly change the world. Naruto gained an odd look as he was caught off guard by the power in her tone. Just like with Yubi, it made him believe that she was right. It was all so confusing for him. I guess I'll just go along with the one thing you both agreed on, Naruto stated as he crossed his arms over his chest. I'll sort through all the information that is in my head and go on from there while I train at the Ninja Academy. Maybe I'll find more clues about who I am and why I was sealed away in such a way. Looking around, Naruto began to worry as his confusion grew and his face furrowed in thought. How do I get out of here anyway? He heard the melodious giggle of Shinju and a dark chuckle from Jubi. It's a simple matter of willing yourself out of here, Shinju replied as she regained herself. Oh and don't be alarmed if you hear us in your mind when you wake up. Since there is no actual seal to hold us back, we're able to communicate with you telepathically. Just speak in your mind, and we will be able to speak to you via link. For now, I let you out until you get used to it, young lord, Jubi said as his long tail moved until its tip touched Naruto's forehead. Good luck young lord and do not worry. We will have your back as best we can. We will be powerful and unstoppable. Next thing Naruto knew was darkness as his eyes closed and his body vanished. The silver-haired boy jolted from his bed as he breathed heavily, slightly sweaty. Looking around, he took notice that he was back in his room, which was revealed better than last night due to the sunlight pouring in from the window. Changing his gaze downward, he realized that he was still in clothing from the previous day. When did I get to bed? Naruto questioned as he couldn't remember going to bed at all. That's because you didn't young lord, the voice of Shinju suddenly sounded, making Naruto jump from the surprise. Don't be alarmed, it's just me, Shinju, talking through our new link that was created last night. As for the bed, you didn't go to bed on your own will. While you spoke to us, primarily Juubi, I took control of your body, so you wouldn't be sleeping on the floor. Okay that makes sense, Naruto began before his eyes widened in alarm. Wait, you can take over my body. Relax young lord, it's not like you're thinking, Juubi spoke up. We can indeed control your body, but only under two instances. The first is if you give us permission to do so. The second condition is if your body is vacant and if you have no defense to keep us out, like being unconscious inexpediently. The second option is what took place here. Naruto nodded his head as he stood up and looked at his reflection. His silver hair looked like a slight mess, while his shirt was a wrinkled mess. I should probably start heading to this academy, since I have no idea where it is Naruto thought before another memory flashed through his mind. This memory depicted the Hokage Tower and a familiar road. He saw a silhouette of a young child running down the path before ending up at another building. This was a wide building that showed plenty of other small silhouettes walking into the building with the words Ninja Academy headlining it. Blinking, Naruto shook his head before tilting it to ease the slight annoyance. Well that was a lot of help. Let's get going then, so I am not late on my first day. Walking towards his door, he paused as he sensed two other chakra signatures on the other side. Checking to see if it was safe, he realized that he recognized the visitors. Opening the door, he was greeted by the sight of S-smiling Kishina and Naruko. Good morning N-A-R-U-T-O times kun, Naruko greeted happily with a small wave. We came to show you to the academy since mom remembered that we forgot to tell you how to get there. Naruto nodded his head as he smiled back and thanked the two girls for helping him, not that he needed it. He walked out as he turned and locked the door to his apartment. Let's go. Hold on young man, aren't you wearing the same thing that you wore yesterday? Kishina asked him. Tilting his head to the side in confusion, he nodded in confirmation. Did you even wash up? Realizing where she was going with this, Naruto shook his head. Lady Kishina, I do not have any other clothing besides what I am wearing right now. I also have yet to receive the money that your husband mentioned, so I don't have any money to get new clothes. Also, my travel here was very long and tiring, so I fell asleep the moment I got home. Also, I realized I have no idea how to get to the academy, nor what time it even starts. So, I had to rush myself to get there on time. Well lucky for you that the academy doesn't start for another hour, and we are only about 15 minutes away by walk, so, you have enough time to shower, Naruko said. Then why are you both here so early if we have so much time left? Naruto asked curiously. I like to get there early to hang with Hinata-chan and my other friends, Naruko replied with a grin. So, go ahead Naruto-kun, Kishina said with a motherly smile. Take a quick shower and we will need head to the academy afterwards. 
Naruto nodded as unlocked the door and entered, inviting the two girls inside. The couch isn't the best, but please make yourselves comfortable. I should not be too long. He left to his room as the two Uzumaki girls sat down, going there is soap already in the bathroom for him to use. Naruto-kun sure is strange, Naruko said as she gazed around the living room. I mean he is really young to be traveling by himself. He also moves sort of like the seniors as the academy, but much more skilled. It's very similar to the chunins of the village's movements. Naruko, you always were observing Kishina thought with a proud smile before turning her gaze to the direction Naruto went. She heard the shower begin. Naruto seems to be a warrior in his own way, with how his arms always pause for the briefest of moments by his weapons or where they should be at. His breathing is low and quiet, while gaze seems to always be beepizing. Not to mention that his steps are quiet and short, as if stealth was a must for him. Minato was right, we may need to keep an eye on him in case he is a threat. Minato, well kind, was no fool at all. They couldn't just screen a child as young as Naruto was without just cause, the backlash could be bad. The issue, they couldn't ignore a child possessing as much chakra as he did just enter their village. A highly fortified village and this kid was able to enter without being checked very easily. The Chunin that guarded the gate were passed out and seemed to be caught in game jutsu when they were checked on. None of that added up as a child that young should not have been able to do that. Right now, the village was in a subtle lockdown as other shinobi discreetly looked around for any unknown faces or anything out of place. Hiruka and Mizuki were informed to keep a close eye on Naruto and report anything suspicious. Speaking of the young man, he walked down the stairs in the same attire as before. His hair was smoothed out except for the slight spike at the forehead. His clothing, while still wrinkled, was slightly smoothed out. Shall we go? He greeted as the girls nodded and they all left. As they walked to the academy, Naruko and Naruto talked about different things. She told him great training areas, pointed out restaurants with delicious foods or strand with great sweets and amazing areas to just relax and lounge around. Basically, anything she could talk about as they walked past. Naruto nodded his head at all the things Naruko talked about, surprised that he could even keep up. He will space out here and there due to a memory, but other than that he paid close attention. Sensing eyes on him, Naruto discreetly looked left and saw an Anbu member look at him from an alley before disappearing. He looked around and noticed that there were more shinobi out and about than yesterday, each one more armed than he can remember. It's like they are preparing for trouble he thought to himself. But why do they keep looking directly at me before looking away? I may have an idea, he heard Jubi replied. But we will talk about that later. By the way, the girl just asked where you are from. Naruto returned his attention to Naruko as he smiled sheepishly at her. I'm sorry, I kind of spaced out there for a moment. To answer you, I don't know to be honest. The young blonde girl looked confused by Naruto's answer. How can you not be sure where you are from? Well, I can't remember too much past of when I woke up by a few trees. Considering the fresh blood and pain on my head, I guess I have amnesia from what an old man told me. So, I can't remember what caused me to be hurt so badly. Oh, that must have been so scary for you, Naruto-kun, Naruko replied with a sad frown. Well, I'm happy you made it safely here. What made you come to Konoha anyway? The old man who helped me told me about the villages, he lied as he figured he should be careful about revealing too much information. Konoha was just the closest choice for me to go to. Naruko and Kishina nodded as that made enough sense. But who taught you to unlock your chakra? Kishina asked as she tried to dig for some information from the sliver-haired boy. The old man did actually, he replied. Well, at least he gave me a few basic instructions and an old scroll he had with instructions on it. I wanted to be a ninja after hearing about the villages, so he helped out. Ashina paid close attention to his answers, trying to detect any lies he may be telling. She was satisfied when she could fin any as his answers all made sense as well. So far, he just seemed to be a talented young man with a lot of potential. Well kids we are here, Kashina said as she looked forward and saw that she was right. The academy, while not big, was extremely wide with a lot of open space for sparing. Different areas were meant for different training exercises. The two gate doors were open as kids walked in, both alone or in groups. I hope you both have a wonderful day and I'll be back to pick you both up after school. This got a confused look from the young Atsusuki, unsure of why she would pick him up too, since he now knew how to get home from here. Yes, you too young man. We will be going shopping to make sure you have your basic needs like food, water, and new clothes. And I'll pay for it this time, so don't worry about it. Naruto's eyes widened at the kind offer of the Uzumaki woman, unsure of why she would do that. Not that I'm unthankful, but why? You don't have to do that for me. Nonsense Naruto-kun, Kishina waved it off happily. I don't mind it at all, it's no trouble at all. I personally know how tough it can be in a new unfamiliar village, while also being an orphan. So, think of it as me helping a kindred spirit. 
Plus, I can't leave you out all alone without trying to help you out. I could never forgive myself if did. And I could spend more time with you and find out if you're safe or not. While it was true that she is helping Naruto out of the kindness of her heart, she is still a shinobi on a mission. She still must make sure that the silver-haired boy before her was not a liability to the village or a danger to her family. Thank you so much Lady Kashina, Naruto thanked her with a bright and warm smile, surprising Naruko at the warmth behind it and making her blush slightly. Okay, bye mom, Naruko replied as she grabbed Naruto's hand. Let's go Naruto-kun. I want to show you my friends. She pulled the young man along, both running into the building. The wife of the Hokage disappeared and reappeared on a rooftop a few feet away from the academy. The smile she had on her face was gone as a more serious gaze took its place. She continued to look at the academy as she spoke. So, anything to report. Appearing in a swirl of wind and leaves beside her, a young man with short blue hair made his way to his knees. He wore the traditional Anbu uniform attire, his mask being that of an otter. He also used the standard tanto on his left shoulder blade. No ma'am, he responded. His apartment was checked, but everything seems to be clean. According to Beaver, he held no ill intentions when he spoke to you all, nor did he seem to be lying. Ashina nodded her head as she heard what she herself could confirm. Any possibilities that he could be a sleeper. Sleeper agents were always some of the biggest worries for a shinobi village. Not even the agent themselves know that they are being controlled to hurt others, usually. All it takes to activate a sleeper would be a remote trigger, a phrase, or even a word. Plus, the motive of a sleeper agent is unknown until the last minute. That is still a possibility, Lady Kashina, Otter answered blankly. We are still looking into everything. Hokage-sama has already been informed. Kashina nodded as she thought over her next plan. Gather two more Anbu with you Otter. We are going to search Naruto-kun's apartment for any issues. The Anbu nodded before vanishing in a swirl of leaves to carry out his orders. Kashina gave one last look to the academy before she too vanished in a swirl of water. At the academy. As Naruko and Naruto walked together, the young man took notice of a lot of kids were looking their way. Some looks were curious, others were jealous, and others were confused. Why do some of them look angry at me? Naruto thought confused as he saw a lot of the guys glaring at his direction. Did I do something to anger them? Don't worry about them young lord, he heard Yubi say in disgust. It's just the pathetic trying to intimidate the strong. You pretty much entered their domain so they are trying to make you fear them out of some misguided pride. Pride, such a dangerous and blinding emotion. Making the weak-minded fools do the foolish of things if they feel it is being damaged. Aren't you proud of your own strength, Jubi? Shinju asked, getting a growl of anger in response. How dare you compare me to these foolish children, Shinju? Jubi growled out. Being proud is fine, but you need to have a strong mind, so you're not blinded by it, like most of these humans act from the memories that we have collected. I'm proud in both my strength and the young lords as a result and power, but I do not let it blind me from the world around me. Naruto ignored the two as they began to argue and returned his attention to Naruko, who stopped walking and was looking at him, with concern. He quickly gave her a warm smile at her worry. Sorry about that, just a bit nervous. Being the new guy in a new place and all that, he lied trying to ease her worry. He supposed it worked as she gave him a smile so bright that the sun looked pale in comparison. No need to worry Naruto-kun. You have me here to help you, so you won't be alone or without a friend. Plus, my friends are cool, so they will be your friends too. She said this with her infectious smile that he couldn't but to return it and nod. She is a really nice person he thought as they entered a large classroom with several different rows. He took note that there were students already there, talking in different groups. Looking around, he noticed the same girl from yesterday sitting alone nervously. Hanada chan Good morning. Naruko yelled out happily as she waved to the shy Hyuga. Hanada raised her head before she smiled happily and returned the wave, albeit more shyly. Good morning to you too, Naruko-chan, she replied before she was hugged by the young Yuzumaki girl. Naruko grinned before pointing behind her. You remember Naruto-kun from yesterday right? She asked getting a nod from her friend. Good morning Naruto-san, she greeted shyly, bowing quickly so she can avoid looking into his eyes. Naruko being her best friend had helped curb her shy nature. She is still shy when she is meeting new people, but at least she doesn't stutter as bad as before. Good morning to you too, Hinata-san, Naruto greeted back as he returned the bow. How pathetic. Don't bow to such a weakling like that. It is beneath someone like us. Roared Jubi in his mind, obvious disgust in his voice. Calm down Jubi. she is still young, Shinju replied with a calming tone. She has time to grow and mature before she can unleash her true potential. Yeah, the potential to waste my time, Jubi replied angrily as he heard him growl. Kid don't waste your time hanging around this weakling. She will only hold us back. Don't listen to him, young lord, Shinju replied in an exhausted tone. 
No one starts off powerful, we all grow into it. She will be a strong ally in the coming future. A friendship with her will be worth it when the time comes. Naruto nodded, agreeing with the powerful tree. Plus, it didn't hurt that he found the Hyuga girl to be cute and having a soothing voice, along with being close friends with Naruko. I hope you are doing well today, Hinata-san, Naruto said with a soft smile, getting the Hyuga girl to blush and nod. Before anything could be said, they heard a loud holler from behind them as another boy burst into the room. A small dog right behind him. The boy was on the slightly short side with wild spiky hair. He was about a good head shorter than Naruto. He wore a light brown v-neck shirt with light beige shorts. He had the traditional blue shinobi sandals that went past his ankles. He had fangs and claws instead of teeth and nails. He possessed slit pupils. He had two red triangles on each of his cheeks. The dog behind him was a light beige with the long floppy ears. The outside center of the ears was a brown color. The puppy was small, barely reaching the young man's ankles. Oh yeah Akamaru, looks like I win this one. The wild boy yelled as the dog barked in response. No boy, all is fair remember. Not my fault you didn't jump over the trash can in time. Naruto tilted his head to the side, not recognizing the young man. He paused for a second as another memory of a smaller version of the young man, but no dog entered his mind. It showed him playing with other people and dogs while grinning happily. Noticing Naruto looking at Kiba, Naruko nodded. Oh, that's Kiba Inuzuka, the heir to the Inuzuka clan. They are a clan that specialize in the use of tojutsu and the raising of nin dogs. He's a good guy, even if he can be a bit arrogant and annoying at times. Naruto nodded his head, noticing he had a decent amount of chakra for his age, something that made Jubi scoff at. Ignoring this, he watched as Kiba took his seat near the back, his dog in his arms. The next thing that caught Naruto's attention was two more young men that entered slowly. The first boy had a spiky ponytail. He wore a gray shirt with blue cuffs. On the front was a strange symbol that kind of reminded Naruto of a wave. He wore blue shorts and blue shinobi sandals. He also looked like he'd rather be anywhere but here as he gazed forward in a tired manner. He was also a head shorter than Naruto himself. The next boy was eating a bag of chips as he walked in behind the first boy and he had much more enthusiasm. He wore a light green, long-sleeved shirt with blue overalls. He was a heavy-set boy with faded swirls on his chubby cheeks. He also had blue shinobi sandals while being as tall as the first boy. The two didn't talk as they just walked in and sat near the window. Oh, the boy with the spiky ponytail is Shikamaru Nara and the heir to the Nara clan, Naruko explained as she sat next to Hinata. The clan is known for using shadow techniques and they are really smart, though don't really like doing much of anything. Next to him is his best friend, Choji Akamichi, and the heir to the Akamichi clan. He is really sweet, though he gets picked on because of his weight sometimes. What are they known for? Naruto asked curiously. Naruko shrugged since she doesn't play with them much, so she didn't know much about the clan. The Akamichi clan are known for body-based jutsus and having high amounts of chakra. It's part of the reason that they weigh so much, it adds to their skills and chakra, Hinata answered. Her clan is very strict, so she had to know how the other clans worked at young age. Also, being the heir made it more expected. Naruto nodded as he listened and agreed that Choji had a high amount of chakra. Nowhere near his amount or Naruko's amount, but a decent amount. He quietly sat next to Naruko as he watched her talk with Hinata, sometimes being brought into the conversation. An hour later, the class was filled with other students. Some spoke to Naruko and others didn't. Even he was noticed by a few students and greeted by some giggling girls and a few interested boys. Soon a man walked in with spiky brown hair that was in a ponytail like Shikamaru. He had dark eyes and a scar that ran across his nose. He had the usual flak jacket of a jonin, blue shinobi sandals and the Kanoha headband. Good morning everyone, the man greeted as he walked to the teacher's desk. Mizuki had something to attend to, so he won't be joining us. Today we are going to go through the usual tojutsu forms that I told you all to practice last week. Then after we will be doing weapon practice, both throwing and close range. After, we will break for lunch, and then we will return inside for chakra theory and shinobi history studies. Remember that the academy jutsus will be tested on in two days. He picked up his clipboard as he looked at his students. Alright, pay attention while I do roll call. Iishi Takamaru. The teacher that Naruto learned was named Iruka Yamino from Hinata, began calling out names. He paid close attention so he could label the names with faces. The only ones that interested him so far were clan heirs and a few civilians. Ino Yamanaka, heir of the Yamanaka clan, Atsuki Aneru, a civilian that seemed to have a strong build, Hinata herself, along with a branch member of her clan, named Hinaru Hyuga. Soon Naruko answered with an excited hear sensei. When her name was called, causing the teacher to chuckle. Next is Naruto Atsusuki, Iruka called. Must be the new student I heard about from Hokage-sama. 
Naruto stood up, getting everyone's attention. Some were surprised due to his appearance being very different from others they have seen. Hello everyone, it's nice to meet you all, Naruto greeted with a small smile. I have the note that Hokage-sama gave to me to give you, Haruka-sensei. Haruka nodded as he checked off his name. It's nice to meet you too Naruto, and we will see your skills later that way we can see what you need to work on. Also, I'll take the note from you when we go outside. Naruto nodded as Hiri took his seat, and Naruka continued. Other names that caught his attention were the Ichiha twins, Sasuke and Satsuki. They both come from a famous clan known as the Ichiha clan, and like with Hinata and Naruko, he felt a connection to them. He will have to ask Yubi and Shinju about that later. He also took note of a blonde girl named Ino Yamanaka, which confused him greatly. She wasn't anything special due to her chakra reserves only barely being above civilians. She was arguing with a pink-haired civilian girl named Sakura Hirano, whose chakra was at the same level as Ino. Naruto could practically feel Jubi's disgust at how weak he believed the girls to be. Alright class let's go outside so we can practice the academy to jutsu forms, Haruka said as the class cheered, only a few groans, and left room. When everyone got outside, Haruka quickly had the kids get into a group as he began to look over the kids. The clan children were in a separate group due to them having their clan style and not truly needing the academy style. Naruto stood separately as he was confused on where he should go to. He felt like had a fighting style, but he didn't know from where and what the style was meant for. What do I do? He thought before his mind was flooded with information, but this time no images. His posture became more tense and loose, as if he was ready for a fight. Naruto also heard Yubi growl lightly, worrying him slightly. Are you alright Yubi? Shinju? He thought to his two tenants. Yeah we are okay Naruto, he heard Yubi reply. Just had a fighting urge enter my instincts. Nothing major. Naruto nodded. Well the academy style is interesting, go join the clan heirs, Shinju said. The fighting style that me and Yubi put together for you is much more powerful than the academy style. Naruto nodded as he moved next to Naruko who was doing her warm-ups with the heirs, her being on her 15th push-up. Naruko looked at her new friend curiously, not pausing in her reps. You have a fighting style Naruto-kun? She asked. Naruto shrugged as he thought over his answer. Sort of, Naruto responded, trying to decide whether he should reveal too much due to his worries. I learned some basic fighting forms from the old man that helped me before. Sue, I figured I'd join you guys over here. As Naruto was about to join his friend with her push-ups, he heard Iruka call out to him. The young Atsusuki walked up to the instructor curious on why he was called. We normally don't get new students after the school year had already started, Iruka explained. The other students have already been assessed so I'm going to personally test yours myself, that way the others can keep practicing. Naruto nodded, understanding the reason he was called. Be careful young Lord Shinju warned. While not sinister in nature, he is most likely doing this for another reason. He is most likely trying to see your threat level in case you become a liability to the village. After all, no leader could let a potential threat go unchecked, child or not. So, what should I do here? Naruto asked his two tenants. Should I show what I know? Of course. Jubi growled out. Show these fools what we can do. Unleash our power on them. Don't be so foolish Jubi Shinju relied calmly. Naruto, it would be best if you hold back in this fight. You are an unknown, a threat in their eyes. You show too much power, then they may imprison you. As strong as we are, we are not stronger than an entire village of experienced and strong warriors. I agree Naruto said as he listened to his instincts and slid into a fighting stance. His arms were in front of him, bent at a 90 degree angle, while his hands were slightly open. His legs were spread and slightly bent as well. His eyes began focusing, gaining a look of concentration. He took a deep breath, relaxing his body as best as he could. Iruka too got into a fighting stance, his eyes beepizing every single tensed and relaxed muscle. Not the most solid stance, but definitely a style that is useful. Tight yet loose enough for easy maneuverability. A fighting stance that seems to be built for speed by the legs positioning. His feet are in a position that will allow him to flow around strikes that are too straightforward. Questions is, just how f begin? Iruka announced as he charged Naruto, ready to test the young man and see if he is threat to his students and village. Naruto took a step back to avoid a punch aimed for his head. He spun on his heel to the left as he dodged another strike aimed for his chin. Sensing more danger, Naruto leaned back as his teacher's leg sailed over him. Snapping back up straight, Naruto went on the offensive as he went for a straight punch that Iruka blocked with ease. The teacher lashed out with a kick that connected with Naruto's chin. The boy flew through the air before he flipped and recovered, landing softly on his feet. He slipped into his stance once more, a small smile forming on his face, as he felt a felt of excitement come over him. Relax young lord, Shinju spoke, calming Naruto down slightly. 
Remember, we are still fighting on mere memories and instincts. We need the time to sort through everything so we may become stronger later without eyes all over us. We don't need these people to be suspicious of us right now. For the record, I am against this, Jubi piped up as Naruto jumped over Iruka's punch and kicked off of Iruka's leg when he went for a kick. I would rather everyone see just how powerful we are currently and imagine our strength as it only increases with time. Naruto chuckled lightly as he pushed away a punch from Iruka and kicked him in his side. Then he elbowed him in the chest before kicking Iruka in the side of the head with his heel. Though dazed, Iruka was able to grab Naruto's leg and pull him forward. Using his other hand, Iruka grabbed Naruto's other arm and pinned the silver-haired boy to the floor. In his struggle to get free, Naruto wiggled and squirmed around on the floor. He felt a rush of power surge through him as he growled in anger and allowed his instincts to guide the rush of energy to his muscles. He slammed his free right arm onto the ground and began to push as he slowly lifted himself and Naruka up. Naruto, stop. He heard Shinju yell out to him as the chakra that was in his arm got cut off from his lack of guidance and he slammed back into the ground. You were calling on both yours and Yubi's chakra in your frustration and was beginning to overpower Ruka. I think it will best for you to call the match before we reveal something that would make us look like a threat. Naruto contemplated this, the rush he felt from the power he felt dying down, before he mentally nodded in agreement. I give up sir, Naruto said to the teacher with a slight annoyance to his voice. While well, he understood why he should hide, he was angry he had to stop using his chakra. He felt so comfortable with it and felt more whole than he currently does. He felt empty the moment the chakra stopped rushing in him. While he was looking down, he missed the contemplative look that his teacher was giving him. It was only for a moment, but he was actually able to lift both him and myself off the ground. I even had to put some extra force in my grip or he would have broken it. Not to mention that he had a sudden rush of chakra before it was cut off. Handling chakra to your limbs is an advanced technique that isn't taught until later in the academy, and he did so well, even if it was unstable. But he didn't seem to realize he was even doing it. I wonder what else you got. He watched as Naruto rolled his sore shoulder before walking up to the silver-haired boy. Well Naruto, you are quite skilled for someone your age, Iruka said with a small smile. You have a few things that we will need to refine and help you work on, but your style definitely holds an impressive amount of speed and power behind it. Not to mention you have an impressive amount of chakra control, considering what the notes I got from the Hokage, detailing how you got some of your skill. Well it still needs work due to how much chakra you were either wasting or how unstable it became quickly, it was impressive nonetheless. Naruto nodded at the small examination of the skills he had shown, feeling a rush of pride at his words. Yes he was holding back due to Shinju's suggestions, he could tell that the Chunin held a lot back against him too, due to not using any chakra in their small bout. I wonder what I can learn from him if he is this skilled. Maybe getting more powerful will help me learn more about myself. Yes, there seems to be much that we can learn from this teacher of yours, Shinju replied with interest. We can only learn so much from these random flashes after all. Eh hey, whatever, Jubi scoffed. If we had used all the techniques that are in our mind like the one we used when we first woke up then we would have won. That guy would have been a smear at best on the floor. Yeah sure, let loose a tailed beast bomb in the middle of an already suspicious of us village and kill the teacher, Shinju replied in annoyance. Oh also keep in fact that the attack would only have worked if we could hit him, and that only would have worked if we caught him off guard. If he stays aware, then we would probably lose due to his skills still being an unknown to us, and they would have to at least be decent if he is a teacher. If we did kill him, then this entire village would be the Jubi merely huffed in anger as he turned away from the giant tree, not having a counter to its logic. Before Naruto could say anything to them, he was surprised when he was tackled hugged from an excited Naruko. You were so cool out there Naruto-kun. I have seen a lot of styles through Pervy Sage and Dad, but I have never seen yours before. Now I can't wait to have a spar against you. The young Yuzumaki had much trouble controlling herself, only barely stopping herself from bouncing around. Yeah but obviously I am still not very good at it though, Naruto replied as he awkwardly pattered back. Iruka sensei is really strong though. He beat me without even trying and I thought I had a chance. I am a chunin Naruto, Iruka said. I have a lot more experience than you and had more than to perfect my fighting style. You keep working hard and I am sure you will go far in the future. We will be working on filling up any gaps in not only your fighting, but anything else I spot today to help you. Naruto nodded and tilted his head to the side, gaining a whispered chorus of cute from the girls of the class, as Iruka turned his gaze to a now slightly blushing Naruko with a smirk. Did I say stop your repetitions Naruko? Naruko's body went stiff as she chuckled nervously, scratching the back of her head. Well you see, I kind of got excited during your spar and wanted to see what he could do. So, I kind of forgot to do the rest. You're lucky it's time to move on to weapon practice or I would make you repeat your reps from the beginning, Hiruka said with a sigh. 
Naruko sighed and relied, happy she got to avoid punishment. Okay, class, gather to the post so we can continue on to our weapon practice. Everyone got up and followed Aruka as he wrote on a piece of paper. Naruko stayed next to Naruto, who were also joined by Hinata. Alright everyone, gather around so we may begin, Aruka announced as the students stood to the side. When I call your name, step up and I will hand you your weapon. You will get 10 chances to hit the targets presented for you. Today, you're graded on your form and ability to actually hit a target, rather than your accuracy. So, basically you just have to hit the post with the given weapons, Shinju said in thought. This will be a slight problem since me and Jubi have absolutely no knowledge with how to throw those weapons. Do you something with those memory flashes I keep having? Naruto asked. Not at all young lord, Jubi replied bored. Sorry to say, but you are on your own here on this one. I recommend watching everyone carefully so you can try to imitate their form. We will help you as best that we can either way. Naruto nodded as he watched another student get handed five shurikens. The young Atsusuki watched intently as the boy held the first shuriken tightly, being careful to avoid touching the edges. He released the shuriken, but it only barely missed hitting the shoulder of the human-shaped post. He watched as he threw more, only one other shuriken hitting the target. His form was way off, he heard Naruko say thoughtfully as he turned to her. What do you mean by that, Naruko-chan? Naruto asked in confusion. He was using the academy styles poses, the Yuzumaki girl replied as she watched the boy only get one hit with the kunais, but missed the others. His feet were too close together, and his shoulders were way too tight. He also moved his entire arm instead of just his hand or wrist. Why would that matter though? Naruto asked, trying to understand. Would that really affect your throw? Yes actually, Naruko replied. I don't really remember why it mattered though. I zone out sometimes when mom and dad explain. She said the last part with a nervous laugh as she scratched the back of her head. Cute Naruto thought as he returned his attention to the front where a girl named Sakura went up next. Do you know Hinata? This caused the shy girl to jump in surprise at being addressed. It is because of resistance and distance, she barely stammered out as she gave a near textbook answer from her father, constantly repeating it to her during training. The form will help with the strength used to fight air resistance, allowing it to slice through the pressure. It will also increase its speed to help keep it straight and fight against gravity. Naruto nodded his head in understanding, though he was unsure of what form and position he was supposed to take. He played close attention when he saw the Sakura girl from earlier score a 3 and give mark on the kunai and shuriken throw respectively. This continues with him watching different students going up and gain various scores until he heard his name be called on next. The young Atsusuki walked up slowly, more nervous than he has been earlier, with no complete idea of what he was supposed to do. So, tight but also not too tight. At least, that's what I could gather. I am so confused here. He was knocked from his thoughts when Aruka handed him a set of shurikens. Good luck Naruto. Remember, the goal is to simply be able to hit the post with the weapons. Do your best. Let's see just how skilled you are with weaponry compared to your fighting capabilities the scarred teacher thought as he tried to appear nonchalant. A student that gained the highest score so far held the shuriken like this Naruto as he fiddled with the weapon, narrowly avoiding cutting himself. When he felt he got the positioning and form correct, Naruto threw the throwing star with a lot of force as his locked onto the post. Unfortunately, the weapon started going upwards and completely missed the post. Naruto stared blankly at the post, trying to figure out what he did wrong. He was sure that he did the form correctly, so why did he miss? Maybe the placement was off or something. He thought as he shifted his foot a bit and grabbed another shuriken. This time when he tossed it, it went too far to the left and missed the target once more. Naruto released a soft growl as he began to get frustrated and glared angrily at the post. This continued to only anger him more when he missed the target with the three other shurikens that he threw next. I couldn't hit a single mark. What did I do wrong? I know I did the form similar to the best one that went before me. Relax young lord, Shinju said calmly, trying to relax his host before he screamed out in anger. The next weapon is the kunai, and they seem to be heavier than the previous weapon. This may help you out and give you better results. Naruto nodded as he took a deep breath to calm his nerves, relaxing his tensed body as best as he could. The white-haired child gripped the kunai, taking his time to get used to the new weapon in his hand and its weight. He then mimicked the same child's stance before throwing it. The kunai flew through the air before it nicked the post's shoulder. Much better young lord, Shinju encouraged proudly. We just got to focus on accuracy. Naruto nodded as he grabbed another one and repeated the process. This time it nicked the side of the target, making Naruto growl lightly in annoyance. With all these different misses, Naruto could hear the other children around him begin laughing at him, which only caused to annoy him and anger Jubi. So, he doesn't seem to be nearly as strong when it comes down to using weaponry Aruka thought, as he continued to write down the results. 
his chakra began to leak out slightly, causing the handle of the kunai to cave in a bit and morph from the tight grip. With a strong toss, the young man threw the final kunai at the post. This time, not only did the kunai hit its mark, but it went directly through the wooden post. The kunai was stopped by the tree behind the post, wedged deeply into it which caused the area it was stuck in to crack slightly. This action actually caused the entire area to go silent at the amount of strength that Naruto seemed to possess in that throw. They also flinched as they could hear the low growl of anger that escaped from Naruto's throat at their earlier laughter. Thankfully none of them seemed to notice that Naruto's eyes changed color as the right eye became pitch black and the left began to go white. Calm yourself now Jubi. Shinju yelled at his fellow tenant, who was growling menacingly and releasing an intense amount of red and black chakra that swirled around his body. You expect me to allow these weak sack of flesh to mock us, Jubi yelled in hate and glared at the Shinju as his tail slammed into the ground. They are far weaker than the young lord and yet they believe they can laugh at because he doesn't some stupid piece of metal around like them. They need to be made aware of their place underneath the young lord and us. Betting enraged by these young ones will do nothing but cause us problems Jubi, Shinju replied calmly as its branch began to sway gently. The colorful chakra pool underneath the great tree began to bubble before the energy began to rise and encircle Shinju at a more rapid pace, which also caused more of the pools of liquid to flow quicker. Seeing the Shinju was prepared to strike back if it needed to cause the Jubi to growl softly before forcefully calming himself down. It understood while he was definitely powerful, Shinju was currently much more powerful and could take him down if it had to. Hind Shinju, Jubi replied finally as the powerful chakra around the pup died and he laid on his paws. But if these children go too far, then I will not step down again. Agreed, Shinju replied simply. The great tree knew that Jubi is only listening due to being significantly weaker than him for the time being. But Shinju also knew that not only will Jubi get stronger with time, but when he grows along with his tails as well. He just had a feeling that Yubi will easily be his equal one day, and he will have to keep a leash on him until that day. Yubi released some of its power with a more soothing effect, feeling the effects calming his warden's temper almost instantly. Naruto felt his body begin to relax as his growling turned into a soft sigh, and his eyes returned to their original color. Are you okay Naruto? Hiruka asked the young before him, slightly wary about him. Before, Naruto had not come close to hitting the targets at all. The closest being able to nick the target here and there with the kunai and no points on the shurikens. Now not only has he hit the target dead center, the amount of strength behind it was amazing for someone his age. Yes, I am alright sir, Naruto replied as he gazed back at the target. I wonder why I kept missing the target, so much Naruto thought as he stared at the hole in the target. His gaze turned past the dummy and noticed how his kunai is lodged into the tree. Wow, I am a lot stronger than I look. Well unfortunately you didn't do too well with your weapon test, Haruka said as he looked over Naruto's results one final time. Well you did good getting a bullseye on your final throw, you didn't really score a point with any other one. You're going to need to catch up on that part. Naruto sighed as he walked back towards Naruko and Hinata, annoyed that he did so poorly. He didn't what it was, but he felt annoyed that he wasn't near the top score list. As he sat down next to the girls, ignoring all the other students around, he went over his movements in his mind as he tried to figure out what he did wrong. He copied those movements down correctly, he was sure of it. He jumped slightly when he felt someone touch his shoulder, turning to find Naruko was the culprit. It's okay Naruto-kun. She whispered to her new friend. I'm sure with more practice, you will be able to better next time. You just need to work for it, something my mama used to always say. In fact, I can even help you if you want me to. Naruto couldn't help but give her a small smile in response to her kindness. He gave the girl a nod in response as he could use the assistance. The rest of the school day continued, which bored Naruto as it was more of a history lesson than anything else. He went on and on about how the village was founded and its more infamous shinobi. The only one that seemed to get his interest was the name Hashirama Senju, due to being called the god of shinobi. Plus, he couldn't deny the interest he held within at the Senju name and abilities that the clan seemed to possess. He also felt that Shinju was very interested since Hashirama seemed to have the abilities to grow entire forests in seconds. Even Jubi was interested when he heard just how powerful the man was and Naruto could feel his want to fight him grow. But that also gave way to annoyance at Hashirama's God of Shinobi title and Naruto could not figure out why the title bothered him so much. The moment the term God of Shinobi was tossed out, Naruto and his tenants felt both angry and annoyed by it. The ringing of the final bell of the day knocked Naruto from his thoughts, causing him to return his attention to his teacher, who just finished dismissing the class. Come on Naruto-kun. Naruko yelled happily as she grabbed his hand. We have to go outside so we can meet up with mom. She's not a fan of being made to wait so we got to go. 
Burrito got up and followed after the girl, well more like he was dragged along without a chance to protest. They were both followed by a giggling Hinata. Outside. Ashina stood there as she watched the surrounding villagers gathering in the courtyard of the academy. She had finished talking with her husband after finding nothing in Naruto's room or things which took no time since he had nothing with him. Doesn't mean that he is safe yet Kashina thought as she waved to a random villager that bowed to her. It's not like he came with much, so we had to buy his living space. As bad as I feel about doing it, I had to rig the place with seals to make sure that he wasn't liability. Especially if he is a sleeper agent, child or not. His chakra reserves are massive for a non-Yuzumaki and non-Jinchuriki. Due to years of honed experience, Kishina braced herself as a blur that was her daughter slammed into her. Hello my beautiful daughter, I hope school was good. Yeah things were great, Naruko replied happily as she smiled at her mother. I hit almost every target with weapon practice, though I messed up with the kunai. Great job sweetie, Kishina congratulated her daughter. And don't worry, we will help you get better during practice. She looked to Naruto who looked around at the different families, Hinata standing nervously next to him. How was your first day Naruto? And hello Hinata-chan. Hinata bowed and greeted the beautiful mother with a smile. Naruto looked at Kishina gave a small smile. It was fine, he replied. It would seem I have a lot to learn and I'm excited to do so. Though I seem to have no skills with weapons, but Naruko has offered to help in that problem. Kishina nodded, storing away that little tidbit for later. She already knew that she will get the report on Naruto's abilities so far from her husband, since the instructors are already keeping a close eye on Naruto while in the academy. Well let's head out then kids as we go shopping and Hinata, you're joining us. I already sent away your guard since I'll be dropping you off myself when we are done. Today, you're having some fun. She ended this with a smile and a wink at Hinata who got a big smile on her face. She enjoyed spending time with Kishina due to her having the same warm feeling as not only her mother, but Naruko as well. Plus, she always finds that spending time with the Yuzumaki woman would always be fun even during training days. Naruto looked at them, trying to understand why Hinata needed a guard and why she was so happy that she was joining them. In the end he was confused and shrugged his shoulders as he looked to Kishina. I'll learn more as time goes on, so I guess there is no need to rush. And who knows, maybe these memory flashes will explain it to me later. And with that the trio headed out towards the village to finish the day off with shopping for things that Naruto needed to survive his stay. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye.